That was our supersonic attempt from a year ago. As you can probably tell, it didn't go so well. All four fins broke off about a third of a second into launch. At this point in flight, the rocket was only going about 400 miles an hour, so we didn't get close to supersonic. So over the past year, I've been redesigning the rocket and it went from looking like this to this. This new design is much stronger and it even goes faster. A few weeks after the launch from last year, I tested the strength of the fins against the estimated force from drag and acceleration by hanging weights on them, and I concluded that the fins broke off from the motor pushing upwards on them. I also rebuilt the rocket, but instead of using wood glue for the fins, I used super glue. Other than the glue switch, there was no design change. I even used the same exact parts except for the two fins that broke. Then, a few months later, the rocket fell off a shelf and broke. After this, I started thinking about how bad the design was. The fins were 3D printed and were super thin, making them easily bendable. This also made glue joints a lot weaker because the glue couldn't soak into them. I redesigned the rocket in the open rocket simulator to have balsa wood fins that would be airfoiled, papered, and filleted. It also had a Von Karman nose cone, which is better for supersonic flight than the Ogre I've used in the original design. This was an improvement, but it was still pretty bad. Around this time, the original Mach Machine video started picking up speed and getting lots of views. People were telling me the most likely cause of the fins breaking off was aerodynamic flutter, which makes sense. The fins in the original design and the current design at the time were pretty big and would cause a lot of flutter. I was also told that my testing method of hanging weights on the hooks was invalid. This is because the force on a real flight would be put over all the leading edge of the fin, not just the root, which is the strongest area of the fin. In a real flight, there would be a moment force on the fins trying to break them off by rotation because there would also be a force on the tips of the fins. This moment force would have been pretty large because of how swept back the fins were. This also makes sense. So I took all these problems into consideration and redesigned, this time with smaller and less swept back fins. I also extended the nose cone to be just a little taller, the tallest my 3D printer could print. Even though this added a little weight, it ended up helping because it improves aerodynamics and moves the center of mass up. The first thing I did was 3D print the shock cord anchor, then I glued it to the coupler and coupled the two body tubes together. I'm a little worried about this anchor melting or popping out of the rocket, but it's fine. As long as we go supersonic, we're good. I then 3D printed a fin and traced three fins on a sheet of 3 32nd inch boss wood. I cut them out, then I airfoiled and papered them. Then I 3D printed this fin alignment jig and used some wood glue to attach the fins. Now it was time for the fillets. I used some fixed epoxy clay, which is nice because it's a clay making it easy to shape and it gives you lots of time to make adjustments. I'd never done something like this before, but I'm pretty proud of my work. So finally, after a year, let's go launch the thing. Okay. Yeah. Good luck. You watch? Yes. Oh, shit. Dude. <laughs> and that's the last we'll ever see of Mach Machine. I'm a little sad we didn't get to recover any hardware, but I guess what do you expect when you put a giant motor in a tiny rocket like that? But other than that, it was a totally flawless fight. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.